Welcome back, everybody, to day five. <laughs> Do I re-record that? I'm going to keep it. Welcome, everyone, to day five. Um, today, we are focused on these navigation links. We need to figure out how we can apply custom styling based upon what the current route, and you'll learn about that shortly, uh, or what the current URL is. Let's get going. All right, so for a visual, yeah, notice how the active navigation styling is hard-coded to the home page, even though I click on these. So we got to fix it. So why don't we start within our layout file? And actually, real quick, notice how Tailwind has given us a little bit of feedback that we need to uh, set the height to 100% on both the HTML and body tags. We missed that in the last episode, so let's do that now. Height full. Um, and then a background of a light gray. And then we also have to set height full to the body. All right, so now if I come back and give this a refresh, uh, you'll see a gray background here, but also um, you can't tell, but the height of the container is now the, the full height, as you would expect. All right, cool. So anyways, I wanna go down to our navigation links right here, home, about, and contact. And of course that translates to what you see here. And yeah, again, notice how the first page has the active link styling, which is a background of this gray 900. Uh, and generally with Tailwind 100, level 100 will be the lightest version and 900 will be the darkest. Um, so if it is active, it looks like we want white text and a dark gray color for the background. And that's what we've done here. Uh, otherwise it should have a lighter gray color and white text when you hover over it, which is what we have here. All right, so here's what we can do. We'll run a conditional to determine whether or not the current page is the home page in this case. And for this anchor tag, is the current page about? And for this one, is the current page contact? And if that is truthy or true, and I'm gonna hard code it just temporarily, in that case, we want these stylings that Tailwind has recommended. So I will paste that in here. Otherwise, and I'm just using the ternary operator here, otherwise we want these. So I will grab that and paste it in. Okay, so now I can remove all of that and here's what we get. All right, so let's get rid of this. And yeah, because we've hard coded true, it's going to be the active styling, right? And we see no change. But if I change this to false and come back, of course, the styling updates. All right, very good. And actually, let's switch over to the home page. Okay, so now the only remaining step is, of course, to substitute this with the real method call. So as it turns out, Laravel out of the box includes a request helper function. Uh, you can call it to grab information about the current request. Now, one of these methods on the object is called is, and this allows us to pass a regular expression, a pattern, and it will determine whether the current page matches that pattern. So I could say if the request is the home page, then apply active styling. Come back, refresh, and it works. But notice now when I switch to the about page, it's no longer highlighted, and that's what we want. All right, cool. So now let's do this. Let's come back, and I'm going to select all of that and paste it in here, and then another one for this link. Okay. All right, next I can get rid of all of this because it's now included as part of the conditional, like so. Now I can update this if the request is about, if the request is contact. And I think that should do the trick. Let's cross our fingers, give it a refresh, and now we have about page, contact page, home page. Everything is working just like we want, and that's great. Okay, so now remember a couple episodes ago how I noted that, yeah, a, a real life navigation link starts to get a little bit messy once you um, change styling based upon the screen width or you have conditionals to determine a special active or selected uh, styling. So with that in mind, why don't we reintroduce that nav link component and uh, see what it looks like? All right, so I'm going to come back to components. I'll create a brand new one here called navlink.blade.php. All right, I'll switch back, select the whole thing, and some of this should be a recap because we've already done this once. So yeah, as we discussed last time, we don't want to hard code the href. We should pass that in. Let's hide the sidebar. All right, so now all of these will change to uh, x nav link components. And then all of this class junk, including area current, and we'll update that shortly as well, uh, can go away. So I'll do this one as well, and this one. Okay, let's go back into our component. Clean this up just a little bit. 
All right, let's tackle uh, this one, Aria Current. Um, if you're just playing around, feel free to delete it. But if you're building a production app and you want it uh, to be as accessible as possible, this is for screenwriters. And it's a way to indicate if the current link um, represents the current page in a list of pages. Uh, if instead it was set to false, that means it is not uh, the current page. So yeah, once again, we could do a check. So I can just grab, uh, let's just grab this whole thing paste it in. And then instead of using CSS classes, I could set the value to page uh, if it is true or false if it is not true. All right, that looks good. Next, uh, home. Yeah, of course, I'm just removing any hard-coded values. So this can be our default slot. And that means right here, home will be effectively pasted there about for this one and contact for that one. Next, the current URI. Um, there's a number of ways we could handle this. Of course, we could inspect the href. But another way I want to show you is to introduce a prop that indicates whether this nav link should be marked as the active nav link. And actually, real quick, let's go over that. So within Blade Components, you will hear about attributes and then props. So attributes represent HTML attributes, the href, the ID, the class, anything. Uh, a prop would be anything that is not an attribute. And we, we basically distinguish between them because you have to know, well, should that prop be included as one of the attributes that we echo as part of the anchor tag? Well, no, right? So if you have a prop called active and you echo it out as part of the attributes, now you have an anchor tag with an attribute name of active, and that doesn't make sense. So we have to distinguish between the two. And here's how we do that. At the top of my blade component, I'm going to use a blade directive. You'll know blade directives because they begin with an at symbol. And notice how my editor um, auto-completes all of the available options here, and there's countless ones. Again, don't feel overwhelmed. You will use a fraction of these. But you have um, directives like if or unless or for each or dump to quickly dump something to the screen. Uh, think of them as little bits of shorthand or sugar that ultimately compile down to vanilla PHP um, echo statements or function calls. So in our case, we want a new prop. So we can declare our props as an array, and we've decided we want a prop called active. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this works, and this will really help, I think. We're going to spit out all of the attributes that might be potentially passed in uh, as a nav link. So for example, in this one, I'll set ID equals something here, just so we can see it in effect. All right, let's come back to the browser, give it a refresh, and then inspect this. All right, and notice it does include the href and the ID. And it does that because we spit out or echoed all of the attributes here. So if I remove that and give it a refresh, of course, we're not going to see them. Okay, so yeah, what about this active prop? Well, let's come back here and just say, mm, again, for the about page, active equals and then some kind of value. Well, notice if I come back and refresh the page, there is no reference within here to that active uh, property. And again, that's specifically because we declared it as a property. If we didn't do that, then Laravel will assume it's an attribute and it will be included um, as one of the attributes that we echo. So that's what I mean when I say we have to uh, explicitly declare any of our props so they can be distinguished. Okay. So now instead of running this logic here, and keep in mind, we could still do this, but I think you'll probably find that it's a bit more flexible if you pass it in from the outside. So we're going to replace that with a simple check of our prop. And we can access that prop by using the variable name for the prop. So if I declare active up here, I have an active variable down here. So if that's true, the use the active styling, otherwise use the default styling. And that's the way it works. Okay, finally, because we are checking this variable, there should be a default just in case it's not passed in when we reference the nav link. So why don't we assume that by default, it is not active. All right, so notice we pass an array. The key is uh, effectively the prop name and what the variable name will be. And the value will be the default uh, value associated with that name or that variable. All right, let's come back into layout. And yeah, let's just try this out. Now for, let's imagine the contact page is the active link. I can just say active. And I want to show you something. 
So I could pass anything here and it's going to work because we're just checking if it's truthy. So if I come back to the browser and refresh, notice it works. But notice, even if I change this to false and come back and refresh, it's still going to work. So how come? Well, it's because right now um, that false value is actually being passed as a string rather than a Boolean. So is a string of five characters truthy? Yes, it is. It doesn't matter if the string says false, it's still truthy. So what we really want to do is say, no, when I write false here, I actually mean false. When I write true here, I actually mean true, not the string true. So here's how we do that. Let's come back to my editor. And notice right now false is green, just like every other string here. That's how my editor is styling it. But if I add a colon at the beginning of the attribute, it changes to make it just a little more clear that, oh, no, this is a Boolean. It's not a string. So as it turns out with Laravel and Blade, when you prefix a prop um, name with a colon, that is your way of indicating that the value you provide there should be treated as an expression rather than a string. So notice in this case, we've given it false, it will be interpreted as false, and it won't be uh, it won't be selected. If I change it to true, it will be interpreted um, as true. And now that's working. All right, so now that I can provide an expression, I can bring this back to what we originally had, which was request is contact in this case. Uh, so we're going to copy this. And now this one should be treated as active if the request is about. And then for home, we check if the request is forward slash. And yeah, I think that should do it. So we have contact, about, home, everything's working. And now, you know what? You've actually learned, surprisingly, a, a great deal about Blade components even before you learned about Eloquent. And that's, that's a very interesting way to learn, but that's just how it happened to work out. And I think that's a good thing, actually. So now you have a dedicated Blade component. You've learned about attributes. You've learned about props. Um, keep in mind, you can also do things like this, where you could declare um, a PHP directive and we could do NPHP to create our block effectively. And then within here, you could have some kind of code. You could do a conditional. You could uh, inspect the value of active and then tweak it in certain situations. And all of that is isolated within the single uh, file component, which I think is really cool. All right, and that does it. Uh, so you know what, really good job. I would imagine for many of you, this is sort of foreign territory. These are new ideas. And I, I hope you're excited. This is fun stuff to play around with. All right, so day five homework. Um, let's continue with this component idea. I would like you to introduce a new prop. We will call the prop type. And this will indicate whether the nav link should be presented as an anchor tag or a button tag. So think about it. Within your component, you will need to run a conditional. Uh, if the type equals A, then it should be an anchor tag. Else, if the type is button, then we need to format this as a button tag. So I want you to see if you can figure that out. If you need help, as always, ask questions in the comments below. I'm there most days. I will do my best to help you. And if not me, somebody else will step in. But otherwise, I will see you, as always, in day six.